quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Look up here. See if you can understand what I'm going to say. If somebody is always manifesting faith for you, and he says, don't worry, I'm there for you, is doing you more harm than good. It doesn't allow you to know the promises of God by yourself. It doesn't allow you to go to the throne of grace by yourself. It does not allow you to ever feel the heat of the day. It says, I'm always there. He puts you in a glass house. And he says, just stay there. I'll do the fasting for you. I'll do the praying for you. I'll do the energetic thing for you. I'll be developing my own spiritual muscle. You stay weak. I'm there for you. It does you more harm than good. Because the temptations that come your way. And the difficulties that will come your way. And the things that will, the devil will throw at you. To get you down. That man, that woman, that spare warrior will not be able to help you. You need that personal faith to stand. And you need to put on the armor of the Lord for yourself to stand above all. Taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation. Nobody will do that for you. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You know, all the words of God that another person may know will not help you at the time you come to the day of battle. The one you read for yourself, the one you hear for yourself, the one you believe for yourself, the one you store inside for yourself that's what help, what will help you the power in that world that is stored inside you that's what will help you and then it goes on to say praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching warrior and watching soldier of christ and watching believer and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Second Timothy chapter 2. In Second Timothy chapter 2, here I'm reading from verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's a believer right there. That's you, if you're a believer, right there. That you will endure hardness. If somebody else is always enduring for you, and is always shielding you, always protecting you, and always by your side, and before anything comes, it's already in front of you. And you do not understand how to personally overcome by yourself. A fellow that is overprotective, that will not allow you to pray by yourself, read by yourself, understand by yourself, resist the devil by yourself, is hurting you, is weakly you. But thou, therefore, and your hardness, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Warrior, have you heard? You're a warrior. You're a soldier. And you're a militant person for the kingdom of God. And no man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Chosen him to be a warrior. And if a man also strive for masteries. Yet is he see not crouch except he strive lawfully. Well, then we're soldiers, we're warriors, 
And we need to understand that we must be watching. Now, warriors that sleep. And those warriors that sleep, they get into danger. And eventually, they are lost. I'm coming to Judges chapter 16. Warriors lost through carnal sinful sleep. In Judges chapter 16, here we're reading from verse 19. You know the story. I'll just read these two verses for you to recollect what happened to this great warrior. By the way, this was not an ordinary man. He was number one in the land among the children of Israel at this time. He was the judge of the land. This wasn't like uh, a new convert. This wasn't like a person that was ignorant of the fact that the Philistines were enemies. Enemies of the nation. Enemies of this man. He knew that these people were after him. And yet he went in there. Look at verse 19, chapter 16 of Judges. And she made him sleep. That's carnal. And she made him sleep. That's sensual. And she made him sleep. That's sinful. And she made him sleep. That's sensuous. And she, Delilah, made him sleep upon her knees. Warrior, what are you doing there? Soldier, what are you doing there? Believer, what are you doing there? Where are you sleeping? Natural sleep. That leads to spiritual sleep. And you forget yourself. And you are in the enemy's territory. And the devil has been watching for such a time like this. Ah, yes, you know, all in the time. Time of festivities. Time when everybody forgets how to be serious, how to be sober, how to be sober-minded. It's a time of carelessness. It's a time of carnality. It's a time of let go the reins. Let go the restraint. Let go all the restriction. At least some people think there must be a day when you should be on vacation. Vacation from Bible reading. Vacation from Bible devotion. Vacation from prayer. Vacation from seriousness. Vacation from watchfulness. They say there must be a time. You cannot be, you know, all the time serious. All the time sober. All the time thinking about heaven. All the time you be a fanatical person. If you're like that, that's what they say. They say, there must be a time when you take vacation. And the judge, Samson, took vacation. And he felt he left his business. He left his responsibility in the land of Israel. And he went to the territory of the Philistines. And he was on vacation. Samson, what are you doing here? You know, Pastor, there are times we, we, we're just tired. And we need to relax. And we need to rest when your nerves are taste up. When you're like string that we're pulling. And it's like, you know, you might snap. You might break. And before you get to that breaking point, just to sip a little wine. And just to relax a little and just to watch things, not because we want to watch them, but just to relax. And just to rest a little bit. It's on vacation. You cannot be fighting every day, that's what they say. You cannot be contending for the faith every day, that's what they say. You cannot be on the spot every day and be doing it every time, that's what they say. That's what happened to this man. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man. 
And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. What's this? Look up here. You, you men, you go to shave your head, pop your head. You're used to that now. We're talking about a man that had never visited a barber's shop. He's never shaven those locks of the head since he was born. And he's now an adult. And he has never experienced this. And yet, as strange as the experience was, something he had never done. He did not even feel the touch of whatever they used. Clippers, scissors, razor, whatever they used. He didn't even feel it. He was really asleep. The devil must have put that man to sleep. The Philistines must have done something that the man, he was in the wrong place. And no wonder, look at the kind of sleep. And then after they shaped off the head, she began to afflict him. I thought he was looking for pleasure. Delilah, what are you doing? That's not right. Delilah, what are you doing? This is not fear. This man came for pleasure. Delilah, this is not proper. This is terrible. The man came for vacation. He came for pleasure. He came for relaxation. And this Delilah began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. The warrior that was lost through canal sleeping. In verse 20. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee something. Is that not mockery? You are strong, aren't you? Get up now. Fight the Philistines. Hey, Delilah, the Philistines were of the same tribe, the same country, the same culture. With Delilah, she was actually an agent. You don't know when an agent can come to you. We're living in a dangerous world. We're living in a Satan-infested world. We're living in a delicate, dangerous community. This land, the world in which you are living, an agent can be sent to you. And this was an agent. And now she came out in her true colors. She knew how not to give herself. She knew how to go so far and not go far enough. She knew how to catch the man to be asleep and she would be awake. She needed money. She was an agent and the Philistines had promised her money and she would do everything she wanted to do so that she would not miss the money. The prize on the head of the judge of Israel and the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep. It's too late. It's too late, Samson. Waking up now. Your strength is gone. Your power is gone. The anointing is gone. All that remains. You can shake. There's no power there. You can shout. There's no power there. You can rattle out scriptures. There's no power there. You can do whatever you did in the past. There's no power there. It is not what you say. It is the abiding spirit and power within that brings the power. He said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him. And put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind 
in the prison house. The man became a prisoner. Israel lost the warrior. Israel lost their leader. Israel lost the number one in the nation because the man slept at the wrong time, in the wrong place, for the wrong person. He forgot himself. Have you thought about your life? The places you go without praying before you go there. The people you contact, interact with without praying before you interact with them. The people that become so easy, easy companions. And they're so, they, they know what they're looking for. And they know if they could get you, they'll get, they'll catch a big fish. And they will brag about it. You know who I got? You know who came into my net? You know the person, you, you can't guess this one. You know the person that slept with me last night? You know the person that saw my nakedness? You know the person that had a wonderful time with this solidity period? You cannot guess. No, I cannot guess. Who is that? And then they mention, no, that cannot be true. That man, that's a warrior. It's a warrior from the church we know. That church, never. You can, I'm telling you, I got him. You know who I got? I can show you the number on my phone. I can show you the communication we have. I can show you. You know who I got? And they mentioned the person at the said. Ah, no, don't tell me that. Don't tell me you got a lady from deeper life. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I set her, I set her up. And I set all the traps. And I got her. And I'm telling you, she forgot herself. She forgot their doctrine. She forgot their Bible. She forgot all the things she used to tell me. Because I've been after her for a long time. And she said, no, I'm deep alive. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm deep alive to you. I will go with you. I'll stay with you. I will come to your church. And we're going to go to that place together. In fact, you'll take me to your pastor. you catch me and you win me over. They want to win you over. You're going to be lost like a senseless warrior. You do not know the price on you. You do not know the value of your life. And because of that, you will be lost. I pray you will not be lost. Am I talking to somebody there today? I said you will not be lost in Jesus' name. Look at Second First Samuel chapter 24. 1 Samuel chapter 24. I'm reading here from verse 2. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheepfold, to sheep goats, by the way, where was a cave? And Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. Well, the story is that Saul was after David. And Saul, Saul should have thought about what he was doing. Number one, David was not an ordinary citizen of the land. A young man that had killed a lion by himself. Fear that man. A man that had killed a bear by himself. Fear that man. A man that came out when Goliath threatened everybody. 
And even Saul could not handle Goliath. And David came up and he said, I'll take him on. I'll finish him. That same God that helped me to kill the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be a prey. I'm going to get rid of him for the nation. And Saul saw the man, it had been done. And all the women sang concerning this young man that he had killed tens of thousands. And Saul killed only thousands. And then Saul was after the man. And I think Saul himself knew a little bit. That's why it says in verse 2, Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and he went to seek David. He knew he was not contending with an ordinary man, but he didn't think through far enough. And so he went in to cover his feet. And when you are near an enemy warrior that has more experience than you have, much younger than you are, but he has more experience. You've never killed a lion. you never killed a bear. you never killed Goliath. This man has done all the three. When you have